you've caught the bug and now you want to go quicker. Today, we're going to look at a few tools that we can use to set up our car to get it right in that sweet spot. So you've bought your first car and now you're looking to maximize how quick it goes, how quickly and how efficiently we can get around the track. You've bought your electrics, you've taken your car racing for a couple of meetings, you've caught the bug and now you want to go quicker. Now you want a car that handles even better. How do we maximize the potential in the cars that we've got? One thing that you can do is look at the setup of your car. If you've got a really good relationship with a barrier like me, you might realize that your car doesn't quite handle in the same way as it first did. Now, every time we have an impact with that barrier, or multiple times if you're me, settings or the setup of our car may adjust through these impacts. Now, ideally, we want to keep on top of those setups at the track or in between meetings. But what tools are we going to need to do that? Well, today, we're going to take a look at some of the things that we can use. So first thing, you're going to want a flat surface. Ideally, if you're doing anything to do with setup, you want a flat level table or surface. Now, I've got this mat on our table here. However, it, there's a little bit of giving it. It's a little bit foamy. Not that that might make too much difference, but to make sure I've got a flat surface, I have got one of these that you might have seen from the Yokomo build videos. A Core RC glass setup board. Now this is going to make sure that we're working on a flat, solid surface. You can pick these boards up for around about £15. I'll leave any links to all the tools down in the description. So we've got our flat surface. Now there's a couple of tools that we are going to need in general. And I'll just go over these before we get into the more specific setup gauges and tools. Especially if you've built your kit like I have, you're going to want some hex drivers. These are far easier than trying to turn Allen keys. You end up with sore fingers and thumbs. So I really do advise investing in these. I've got a one and a half millimeter and a two millimeter hex driver. Sometimes things are a little bit fiddly to get a hold of. Recommend a pair of long nose pliers for getting into those little gaps. Next, usually we do get them with a kit, but if you've bought your car second hand, you might not have one of these or you might have lost it, is a turnbuckle wrench. This is going to make it easier to make quick setup changes. Also, I recommend either a steel ruler or these. I've got electronic calipers. And mine aren't the greatest. These parts here are plastic. You can get them with metal. I just got this off Amazon. But it does the job that I need it to. I'll use this for measuring the length of links or for the length of our shocks. So those are basic tools that we've got. Now we're going to move into more of the setup of our car. So the first tool we're going to look at is the droop gauges. Now, droop refers to upwards movement of the suspension arm. So how much this arm moves up and down. Now we alter our droop with usually on my car, there's a little screw there. Droop might also be referred to as down stop. Tighten it to give it less upwards movement, restrict the amount of movement that it's got, or I can loosen it off so that there's more range of movement so if i was to tighten it you can see there how the suspension arm rises that gives me less movement here now if i wanted more droop i can loosen that off which gives me a bigger range of movement now you could set your droop by eye it's not recommended because you'll end up with uneven suspension arms so how do we get around this so first of all we've got these here, which are 10 millimeter droop blocks, and they'll be placed onto our setup board. The chassis then goes onto the top of these blocks. And I've got two, you only really need one. Our droop blocks go from minus three to 10 on this one. And this has got 0.2 millimeter increments going from four to 6.6. .6. If you wanna be more precise, obviously go with the, the smaller increments. However, that only goes up to 6.6. .6. So for precision, the one with the smaller increments might be better. However, if I want to set a higher number of droop, I might use the bigger one. Now, the higher the number, the less droop there is. So the higher the number, the higher the suspension arm rises, which means there's less droop. 
a lower the number on the gauges means there's more range of movements or more droop. So in terms of basic setup, the next things you might want to set are your camber and your toe. Now you can get individual camber gauges and you can kind of set your toe out with calipers if you wanted to. But I was looking for something easier. And previously when I raced, I remember that my dad and myself had a setup station, which meant we could do our camber and our toe and caster measurements all in one setup system. So I set about looking for setup systems. Setup systems are not cheap. Okay, all the big companies do them. Hoodie do them. Arrow Max do them. There's Yeah Racing do them. And you was at least looking at £90 for a setup system. And then even bigger numbers if you wanted to go with something like a hoodie setup system. Check that out, by the way, the price of those hoodie setup systems. So I was looking and looking. And I didn't know if I wanted to get a second hand one. And just from looking online, I found this. A setup system from SC Models. Now this is all nice and neat in there. It's a nice, easy case to take to the track with you. We've got our gauges, which we have to build. You got to put the bearings in, which some of them you have to. And I'll show you how quick it is to put these together. If I just move that car out of the way there. We've got our tow gauge. Got a bag of thumb nuts. A couple of thumb screws there. And literally, you take one of these, one of these, put it together like that. A little screw in. And you're done. That's one. So if you're at the track, and you do feel like your car's doing something irregular. Well, it's nice and quick to get them on the setup gauges and see what's going on. Now, if you are racing for fun, you might decide that you don't want to spend the money that, are, that the setup gauges cost. And I do understand that. But for me, I want a car that I can drive. That's where the fun comes, driving it and driving it as fast as I can, which isn't very fast, but we try. So there we go, our four gauges all set up. So once we've made our gauges, it's just a case of attaching these to the car. They just slide on to where your wheels would go and then just tighten up these thumb nuts. And there we go. So this hasn't been set up currently, so the numbers are way out. But basically we've got our gauges here that show our camber. Zero would be straight. And then we would want to angle those in slightly. The way that we would do that is just by adjusting these turnbuckles here. And as you can see here, as I turn that, it's adjusting our camber. Now, after we've set our camber, the gauges stay on. And we take this, which is our toe gauge, we turn your servo on, let it centralize, and we push it to one side, and on the top here, we've got a number of degrees. Toe out, which would be the front, very front of the wheels pointing outwards, or toe in, which would mean the back side of the wheels pointing outwards. Now, ideally, we want some toe out. The way that you would adjust that is the turnbuckle wrench until we got our desired number of degrees. Now, once we've set our toe at the front, move on to the rear, some cars the rear toe is set by a block and pill inserts. This, it's got adjustable toe control. So you can do exactly the same on the back as you can the front. On the rear of the car though, you want toe in. 
rather than tow out. If you use a setup station or you're considering purchasing one, give us a thumbs up down below. Once the camber and tow have been set, you can take these gauges off, put some wheels on and look at setting the ride height. Now the good thing is with these thumb nuts from the setup system, we can use them just to quickly put on our wheels a little bit easier without having to use a wrench. But the last tool that we are gonna use is our ride height gauge. Now, just before you start measuring and adjusting, make sure you're race ready. So that means pop your battery pack in, because obviously this is going to adjust the weight of your car. Get that in. Now we can adjust the ride height. So this is our ride height gauge. Mine goes from 3.8 mil all the way up to seven. And when we measure our ride height, ideally you want to do it on the center line of the car. However, you can come to the side of the chassis and measure from there. How do we adjust our ride height? So at the minute, these collars are unwound all the way to the top of the shock. Now to lift that, rear of the car up say so to lift one end of the car up we're going to need to put some tension on those springs ideally you need to do the same amount of turns on each side so on my shocks i've got a little notch so i can see how many times i've turned it so as you see at the minute we can't even get that ride height gauge underneath there just to show you let's put some tension on these shocks And hopefully now you can see that our gauge slides in and there's roughly five mil of ride height there. So the tools we've used are our droop blocks and droop gauges. We've used our setup station to measure our camber angles. We've used the tow plate to measure tow in and tow out. And finally, we've used the ride height gauge. If you like this video, guys, try one of these and I'll see you over there.